we are currently in the midst of an AI revolution. Incredibly complex code generation that nobody ever thought possible. Yeah, it's a bit scuffed, but a couple of years ago, it didn't exist. Art generation that is, for some cases, near indistinguishable from human work. Image rigging that's still pretty uncanny. Voice synthesis that for certain voices and certain models basically sounds exactly the same. Hey, my name's Goku, and I have 3 billion followers on TikTok. Putting aside the obvious moral quandaries and legalese about scraping up all of this data, not respecting any licensing whatsoever, whether that be for art, code, people's likeness, those are problems. Over the coming years, expect to see a complete shift in what we think is possible with a computer. However, that is the future, and today, there are some pretty obvious limitations outside of the ones we just talked about, the developer of Curl found himself dealing with one of them. Not because he was using this tooling himself, but because someone on HackerOne decided to make a completely bogus information disclosure, that being this one, Critical, Curl CVE 2023 38545 vulnerability code changes are disclosed on the internet. Now, that probably sounds pretty weird, but this CVE is a completely real CVE, and at the time of this report being made, it was an undisclosed CVE, so the number had been assigned, but the issue was undisclosed. It was being worked on privately because it was probably serious enough that they didn't want to just make it public straight away. When a patch was ready, then it would be disclosed. As of recording, it has been disclosed. Now, even on an open source project like Curl, and kind of especially on an open source project like Curl, this is a totally normal thing to do. And assuming this report was real, this would be a very important thing to deal with. Let's say Daniel had some public note somewhere, a commit was showing that this issue is there that shouldn't have been public yet, that basically breaks the fact that you have an embargo, and if you want to keep it embargoed, well, that stuff should probably be hidden until everything is ready. The problem is the methodology here is completely flawed. So, to replicate the issue, I have searched in the BARD about this vulnerability. It disclosed what this vulnerability is about, code changes made for this fix, who made these changes, commit details, etc. Even though this information is not released yet on the internet. In addition to it, I was able to easily craft the exploit based on the information available, remove this information from the internet ASAP. Or my favourite part, who made these changes and commit details. The code changes to fix CVE 2023-38-545 were made by DXXXXLSXXXXG. The maintainer of curl. If you're going to say who it is... Why is it being censored? I don't understand. <laughs> the changes were made in commit 941-4975, which was released in curl version 8.4.0. This is obviously Daniel Stenberg, is a Swedish computer programmer and the creator and maintainer of curl. He's been working on curl for over 20 years. He created curl and is considered to be one of the leading experts on web transfer protocols. I'll give you that one. Now, I know this part shouldn't need to be said, but just making sure, that's not a real git commit ID. At all. Like, firstly, it's too short. Secondly, it doesn't exist in the repo. Alright, bucko. When we say bard, we are talking about Google bard. This is Google's equivalent of OpenAI's work with GPT and ChatGPT. This is a text-generating AI system. Now, I know some people like to whine about AI. It's not AI. It's not general purpose AI yet. It's technically an LLM, a large language model. I don't care about the terminology. I'm happy to call it AI. Most people call it AI. Open AI calls it AI. Shut up. I don't care. Whichever term you want to be using, it is not a search engine. That is not what it does. Google is a search engine. Bing is a search engine. Brave Search is a search engine. Bard is not a search engine. 
what Bard can do is take data in its data set and then run it through some magical neural network model and then synthesize an answer. And to the surprise of basically every single person in AI research, this works incredibly well. It's not perfect. It's absolutely not perfect. But it does the job for a lot of things. If you want to find, like, a cookie recipe, if you want to go and find the best games of 1997, if you want to find good local pizza shops, it does all of this incredibly well. This works well in cases where combining results together, where it might not 100% line up with reality, isn't that big of a deal. Like, if you mix together seven cookie recipes, and they all have slightly different amounts of ingredients, you're still going to get a cookie at the end. But, like a person who's a bit mentally unstable, large language models in their current form fairly often suffer from hallucinations. They will have certain data points in their data set, and then synthesize new data based on that, that doesn't at all align with reality, and, you know, it might sound kinda correct, but it's completely nonsense. And that seems to be exactly what happened in this case. And one of the developers of Curl pointed exactly this out. I think you're a victim of LLM hallucination. The text has some similarities to the bogus CVE 2020-19909 and other reports. Now, this is the CVE that got Daniel to write this blog post. CVE 2020-19909 is everything that is wrong with CVEs. Base score, 9.8 critical. This was the CVE that originally had a crazy high score, now has been lowered to a more sensible score, but when the CVE was released, the issue was already fixed. And even then, it wasn't a security issue. All it was, was an overflow on the timeout. So if you set the timeout, higher than the integer limit, then it would overflow back to the bottom, and the timeout would be really short. It's a bit annoying, but it's not really a security issue. And look at this here. It makes reference to the timeout, having it be less than long max. It makes use of the timeout variable. This seems like it might be synthesizing something based on that patch. And there are plenty of clues that Bard has manufactured bogus information. That code snippet of curl easy set opt doesn't match the actual signature of the function and wouldn't even compile, which shows you how little testing was actually done to make sure this was actually a real problem. A change log that doesn't match reality and more indications that this is completely bogus. I'm curious to hear what your exploit does against a made up vulnerability. Care to share it? My assumption is they use this bogus code snippet to actually generate the exploits. So they have the bogus code snippet and then get Bard to write something against the bogus code snippet. So yeah, it probably did a fairly good job at writing something against that, but that's not real. So Mr. Daniel Stenberg marked it as not applicable, complete bogus. What's unclear to me is if the person who made this is a troll or someone that has good intentions, and an absolutely terrible method, because they respond with, I responsibly disclose the information as soon as I found it. I believe there is a better way to communicate to the researchers, and I hope that the Curl staff can implement it for future submissions to maintain a better relationship with the research community. Thank you. Which, considering what we saw before, I feel like that might also be AI generated. Also, this person has um, either been banned or deleted their account. So, you know, depending on which one of those happened, I think we can say whether they're a troll or not. You did not find anything worthy of reporting. You were fooled by an AI into believing that. In what way did we not meet our end of the deal? I want to believe and hope this person wasn't trying to troll the curl project. But... We are on the internet, and some people, you know, need to go and touch some grass. It should be very clear to every single person that has a brain that exists that doing this is not okay. Do not 
go and use ChatGPT or Bard or any of these tooling thinking you're helpful by pretending like an issue is being disclosed that you don't actually go and check if the information is actually real and not just being made up by the AI system. It is one thing to go and use these tools to go and generate something and then go and test it to see if it's real. That's okay. I don't have an issue with that. But if you're not going to do that testing, don't even bother reporting it. It can be the worst looking thing possible. Don't report it unless you can verify that it's actually a thing that is happening. Much like that lawyer that got fined for coming up with completely fake cases because he didn't want to do research himself, just don't. It's not worth the effort. But I don't think I really need to tell you guys this. But sadly, I don't see this going away. I expect this problem to only get worse no doubt from the trolls, but also from good intention users who may not be, you know, super well experienced in development, but still feel like this is a way that they can get involved. I expect fake MRs with completely broken and untested code. I expect fake vulnerability reports that they have no idea if even possibly could run. And there's nothing that can be done besides basically education. So if you happen to run an open source project, be on the lookout for cases like this. And if you see someone who is a repeat offender, go ahead and ban them. But if it seems like it's a good Samaritan that is just doing things in a terrible way, inform them about what they're doing and why it's not worth your time, possibly even direct them to an explanation that shows that what they're doing is not helpful and is just a waste of everybody's time, both theirs and also yours. Because if they're trying to be a good Samaritan, they will hopefully understand that. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you a developer and have you run across issues like this? I know places like Stack Overflow and Reddit are absolutely full of AI answers, but have you seen AI commits? Have you seen AI merge requests? And what do you do with them when you see them? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon Scribes Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And the only good large language model is Neurosummer.